the voice in your ears and the face on your screen. I'm Perfect Purpose, and this is Pro Football Sweden, presented by Rare Athletics. This is our first season talking about football in Sweden, so we appreciate any feedback you have for us. So leave comments, send us DMs at Pro Football Sweden, whatever you can do to help us help you grow the sport of football in Sweden and help give some exposure. So I am joined here today by my two co-hosts, the newly named Jalo Juice and Antoine Allen. Hope you guys are doing well. Jalo, how you doing, man? Man, I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. I'm blessed. And it's good to see you guys. I'm very excited to talk defense today. Okay. What about you, Antoine? How you doing, man? Yeah, I'm a I'm a piggyback on what Jalo said. Blessed. Definitely blessed. Uh, happy to be here with you guys. Uh, happy to see you guys' faces again. And yeah, excited to talk about the defense. Yeah, and just for full transparency, we're recording this the same day as the last episode. So we're going to be skipping through like first and 10, and we're going to get right to it after this. We're talking defense, baby. Defense wins championships. And to win championships on defense, you need good defensive players. Or at least players worth watching. Because sometimes dude could just make good hits. Might not be good, but it's good to watch. So we're going to start naming some guys. Let's start with defensive backs. I'll actually let um, Alpha lead this one off. Who do you got? So the first defensive back that we got on the list is Nassim. Nassim, he's a DB who's playing for Herbal Black Knights. I think it's someone that you guys need to look out for. Um, he started down in the south of Sweden uh, from Helsingborg. Um, down there, he was injured, so I didn't get to see him play much. But when he has gotten healthy from his knee, um, he's been a guy that Arab Brew has signed from the South, and they brought him back. So if they bring you back, that means you got to be doing something right. So be sure to watch out for him. We're talking defense, baby. Defense wins championships. And to win championships on defense, you need good defensive players, or at least players worth watching, because sometimes – Dude could just make good hits. Might not be good, but it's good to watch. So we're going to start naming some guys. Let's start with defensive backs. I'll actually let um, Alpha lead this one off. Who do you got? Yeah, I, I've had the pleasure. So I played uh, five football with Nassim last year. Um, and he's just a good dude, uh, a good dude off the field, um, a good dude on the field. Uh, he definitely knows how to play the position. Uh, he's going to trash talk you. He's going to make he's going to make your life a little bit difficult if you're a receiver. Um, but yeah, man, he's just a good dude. Big, tall, uh, quick. So yeah, man, he's. Uh, I think he's definitely going to be somebody who can uh, elevate the DB core uh, in Edinburgh for sure. And I'm, I'm, I'm excited to see how he plays under Sam because I know, like I said on the uh, on the episode one, Sam is a defensive. Uh, he's a defensive head coach, and he focuses he focuses his attention on the DBs. So I'm looking looking forward to seeing uh, him make an improvement in the jump and his skill level and talent level this year. If I could also mention just the aspect of him as a player, because I got to know in the sim over um, the, I know him since 20, uh, since COVID, you know, the end of COVID year. And he's a guy who's eager to learn, even though he was injured and couldn't do much, he wants to learn it and get better. And as you said, his size helps him out. He's not going to be the fastest DB in the world, but he has the length. And if he continues to use that to his advantage, he's going to dominate on the defense side of the ball and to help Airbrew be a competitive team on the defense side of the ball. All right, who we got next, guys? Next up, we have uh, C. Wynn Erickson, DB, also for the Airbrew Black Knights. Um, I don't know much about him, so I'm not going to say much, but I know that they have an American uh, coach who, as you mentioned, uh, likes to work with the defense side of the ball, especially DBs. So I hope that um, iron can shop with iron over there and He's a guy that he's on the list. So that means that either one of us recommend him or one of their coaches recommended for him to be here. So let's look out for this guy. I got nothing. I don't know nothing. Yeah. About I, this guy. Yeah. But again, like Alpha said, we're going to watch out for him. So we're going to be looking to see what he brings to the table this year. Uh, next guy on the list is, again, names I can't say. Elliot Krogius. Is that the name? Is that how you say it? 
Yeah. Elliot Krogius. Oh, yes. Let's, let's just go with that. <laughs> yeah. Defensive back from AIK. Again, I'm not too familiar with his skill set, so I'll let you guys, you know, run the show. If he played in AIK a couple, a couple of seasons ago uh, when I played in Costcuga, AIK, they had some of the best DBs uh, in that division uh, for, for that year that I played there. So if he was there and, and he was there again last year, uh, hopefully he made some improvements. Um, and hopefully, you know, uh, he can adjust to uh, seeing a lot a lot more quicker uh, receivers on the field this year from all the teams uh, in the Super Series. So, yeah, excited to watch him play. Yeah, I'm not sure if he is the young guy that I mentioned speaking with Josh. And also when I went over to Coach Mo house, he had a nice dinner for me. Shout out to you, Coach Mo for I Core. Um, he was over there coaching up some young guys. One guy played offense, one guy played defense. So I'm not really sure, but we're going to find out this year if you're that guy. So, um, Elias, you know, shout out to you. You know, someone recommended you to be here. So make sure that you show out and represent for I Core. And as, um, uh, um, Antoine just mentioned you guys were some of the best uh, DBs in the Division One, but let's see how you guys do uh, over there. So on the defense side of the ball, if you're rooting for someone, you better be rooting for Elias. He's a guy on our list for a play to watch. And then next, force back from K Town Predators. Uh, this guy, all I know is I saw his stats. They said he was six three, and I was like, that's all I need to know. That's all I need to know. <laughs> He's six three. We can work with him. I'm I'm definitely going to be watching to see what he can bring. I think he's a young guy. I'm not sure how old. I think he's like 19, 20, something like that, or 21. Like very, very young from what I've been told. But um, he's six three. I expect great things. I, mean, I think he's like a little bit over 200 pounds as well, so he should be able to hit a little bit. So I'm looking out for him. Max Forsback. I've seen some stuff online, but it's kind of like social media stuff. So, I mean, I mean, he has a presence, so that could be something that could translate. But I expect great things from Max. Yeah, I, I've done a little bit of research. Um, I asked one of the players down there, and they spoke a little bit about him. I know that he has played football abroad in Germany. So I think with that experience going against different competition and coming back over to Sweden, she gives you the motivation. So I do believe that he's going to be a player to watch. When I asked one of the teammates, uh, you know, who you got on the defensive ball who's going to – Hope you guys stop Matt. They mentioned this guy. So let's see what you're going to do, Max. I really know much, uh, too much about him. But um, yeah, 6'3, um, uh, good speed, I, 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 I'm assuming. Uh, so yeah, hopefully he can be able to make a difference for them on that, on that side of the ball. Because a lot of teams, I think this is just, this is just a general. I think the DB position in the Super Series is uh definitely one of the one of the hardest positions to play with so many skilled and athletic receivers out there so if you can if you are a db and you made it on this list and we don't know too much about you just know that we're expecting a lot from you because you have some of the best receivers uh, in football in europe that you're going up to. so uh there's a, there's a lot on your plate so we're definitely going to be watching that position close who do you got next guys um divin baleka from Limheim Griffins. Again, I don't know almost anything about him. A uh, quick look online, you know, he's of the right hue to play defensive back, if that makes sense. Uh, other than that, that's all I got. You guys know who this guy is? Nope, no idea. I don't know, Anton. You didn't. <laughs> you didn't cook. It, you didn't sauce him up last year. <laughs> nah. I, I, he, so he plays. He plays in Limheim. So. Uh, they were in Division One last year, mm -hmm. so no, I didn't. I didn't get a. I didn't get a chance uh, to see him last year. Yeah. yeah, we don't know much about you, buddy. So let's see if you're <laughs> going to make us somebody who we're going to be like. Okay, hey, he's top DB this year, so I'm hoping that that can be a guy. But let's go ahead and move on to my boy, Kale Hendrickson. You know, and I will go first on this because Kale, that's my guy right there. I love Kale. He is a guy who just isn't a sim. He loves to learn, and this guy is in the gym probably every day, every week. I'm watching him and ELF superstar, um, Lovick Myron training every single day, every week. So I know that this season is gonna be a season for him. Um, I wish that he would go play abroad as well, but maybe that's something in the future. So Kyle, I'm not gonna go too much, you know, cause I can go on the list cause that's my buddy. 
But Kale um, is a guy who's going to hit you. He's going to cover you. And he's going to want to compete against you all the time. So he's a guy who you definitely want to watch out for, Stockholm Me Machines. And he's going against some of the best, well, some of the best. He's going to get some of the best in Europe. He's going to get the best receivers that he's going to see on the football field um, in Sweden every day in practice. Okay, so with, with Calais, I know a little bit about Calais. I've seen him play over the years for Mean Machines. If I'm not mistaken, he's number 23. Like, I hate that they don't put their last names on the jersey. <laughs> but um, if he's the number 23 that I think he is on the field, I've met him, I've talked to him before. But on the field, you know, they have on helmets and jerseys. But if he's the number 23, who I think he is, dude's a playmaker. And like what Alpha said, hard hitter for a DB. Um, kind of looks more like an outside linebacker type than anything, but he can cover. So that mean that makes it makes him very valuable to the defense. You can move him around if you need be. So I'm excited to see him this season, excited to see how him and that defense work together to, you know, stop all these newcomers who think that they're good in the super serum. I mean, not saying they're not good, but you know, it is what it is. And uh, Calais will be part of the catalyst on the defense of stopping opposing teams. That's all I got. Antoine, you got anything on Calais? Yeah, just real quick. If, it, if it's the player that I'm thinking of uh, on the field, he, like Alpha said, he loves to compete. He's always talking. He'll, if you do something good on him, he definitely has no issues like saying like, Oh, that was a nice move that you did right there. Well, oh, I like that right there, but he's he's definitely there to encourage you on the field, which is kind of like in the heat of a, a game, you're like, what? But <laughs> it's good. So he, he likes to compete uh, and he has fun with it. And uh, you, you can just tell he plays with like a love and a joy for, for football. So. All right, I'm here with Kale Henriksen from Stockholm Meat Machines. Kale, welcome to the pod. Hey, thank you so much. Great to be here. It's awesome, man. We're going to jump right into it. First question yeah. is, I'm going to ask this, what's the motivation? What's the motivation for this season? What's the reason for you deciding, like, hey, we're going to get out here and try to win another Super Series? What's, what's the motivation? I mean, I just love to win. Uh, I love to win, even though it's four teams in the sub-series. <laughs> but it's way more fun to win when it's eight teams, for sure. I mean, I think I don't think anybody is against there's eight teams in the sub-series. I mean, it's just so much more fun. That's exactly what Alpha said on the last podcast, was it's more yeah. fun to beat a lot of teams. Yeah. It must be a player um, thing. It's a player thing, but, you know, since football is not that big, you get to know the guys on the other teams. So playing the same guys every, I mean, almost yeah. every every other week, it just, it's lost the edge. So when they added more teams, especially Oslo, I think it was really good. That's awesome. That's pretty cool. Then yeah. Playing more teams, definitely the motivation to play for this year. So getting a little bit into you guys' team going into this season. Last year, you were pretty good. Y'all were undefeated last year, right? Were you? Trying to remember. Yeah. Yeah. I'm okay. Serious. Just making sure. Yeah. I've been winning so much. I, it's hard to keep up with if you ever lost. If you <laughs> have it, I mean, it's crazy. That's why I asked motivation first off. But uh, so last year you're undefeated. But again, there's only four teams. This year, there's going to be more teams. Schedule is a little rocky, especially because you guys are playing a CFL at the same time. So, you know, some weeks are going to be a little different. What kind of like improvements can we expect to see from the team? You know, like how how can you get better than what you did last year, and and what are some of those things that you think you guys have done in the off season to prepare yourselves? So we had a solid off season. We really never stopped working in Stockholm. We continue working during the entire off season. Um, so we probably made some good improvements there. I definitely see our defense stepping up big time this year. I got a big trust in our guys. We got a uh, two German two German linebackers. They look real good. Um, and, I mean, we got a lot of new guys as well. So, we we'll just see how that fits. I think it's going to be good. Our, our offense is looking really good right now. We just need to get the pieces together. Okay. So, next question I'm going to ask is, going into each week, you know, it's a, a little bit of a thing. Obviously, it's tough because you guys have already won a lot of games. But this is going to be a different season. 
every week is going to be different. You, like you said, even your roster has changed a lot. You're playing against different type of players. What are a few things that you guys know that you have to do, you know, week to week to make sure that you play the best football you can and ultimately come out with wins? We're not going to do anything different that we've been doing the last couple of years. We just need to get prepared before every game. But there is a difference between being undefeated. Everyone wants to beat you real bad. It mm-hmm. doesn't care if it's AIK or Tiresa or it's Kristianstad. I mean, everybody wants to win. And everybody gets the same opportunity. Like, like every week is new week. And if they can defraud us or beat us, I mean, they just have that different motivation. Mm-hmm. Um, we just need to get rolling. Okay. And continue to get rolling, yeah. Hey. Do your job, right? I, I'm a Bill Belichick guy. Do your job. That's all you have to do. <laughs> Next thing I was going to ask you was um, give us a little bit of insight on, on your, your guys' roster and some of your players that, that you think are going to, you know, contribute heavily this season that maybe people don't know. You know, some of the guys that people don't know who you know are going to make plays for you. You got any guys you can throw out to us? Yeah, I got a couple of guys, of course, of course. Uh, so we have a new quarterback, Matteo. He's a great dude from Texas, as you. I must see him contribute a lot. I mean, we lost Mark. Mark was a great guy, awesome person, on and off the field. But I'm excited to work with Matteo. Um, we have KG, uh, our cornerback from Louisiana, played a one, played arena football, then moved to Sweden. So I'm uh, I'm excited to see what he can do. Give me some Swedish guys. I mean, I we understand the imports are going to be good, yeah, but we're going to know those names. Give me some. Give me some homegrown. Give me some guys who you know I can't pronounce their names even. If you have any okay. of those, I want to. I want to know something, Kale. <laughs> one guy I know is going to have a crazy year is a good friend of mine, Leo. Is the is a safety, free safety. He just keep evolving okay. so fast, and he's really young. Uh, I'm gonna just see him explode this year. So, like, awesome. two seasons ago, he had a great season, like his first year in senior football. Last year, he had some injuries, but even though he kept playing through it, and he just exploded. Like, especially football intelligence, he got so smart. And he, I mean, he's he's still young, so he's still learning a What's lot. What's Leo's last name? What's Leo's last Spagnoli. name? Spagnoli. 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 Okay, Leo yeah. Spagnoli. Okay, I'm putting him on the list. I'm watching Put him Leo. on the list. Now that, yeah. I'm putting him on the list. list. Yeah, yeah go ahead. for sure. One other guy to keep an eye on. We have a guy coming back that didn't play last year. Oliver Stutt. I mean, I'm excited to see how that's going to turn out. He had a tough yeah. injury, but if it's someone that, like, a workhorse in the gym, uh, it's that guy. Between bringing Oliver back and then having Caspar join, y'all's running attack is pretty scary. <laughs> That's tough. Yeah, that is so. tough. <laughs> that is tough. And then, you know, yeah. you bring in the new quarterback, but I mean, you're still a really good quarterback and you have good receivers. I, okay. I don't want, I'm not going to fanboy you guys too much. I can't do it. I think people already know which team I like the most. But um, so last question, I'm going to let you get out of here, Kyle. Going into this Super Series, you know, there's eight teams this year. You got one team coming all the way from Norway. You're only playing seven games, though. There's no home and away. So every game matters. What is something that you're really excited about going into this season about the league in, in whole? Like, what about the league is really exciting to you? No, but it's, it's just like I said, playing – Playing more games, playing different teams. I mean, every team has their own, like, at least for their offense, doing different stuff. I mean, we like the two are coming out in spread, coming out in trips. Uh, it's just ex- more excited to see the new teams from Division One. Just what what did uh, what do they like to do on offense? The variation. That's awesome. That's it. You get to play more football, right? Like exactly. playing against the different teams, you get to see more, and that's going to make you a better, you know, player overall. So that's pretty cool. Kale, thank you for coming on the podcast, man. Uh, appreciate you. Uh, good luck to you guys this season and Super Series, as well as in the CFL. I should be yeah, down there when you guys play against the – what is it? The Manchester Titans. Yeah. I've already, I've already put that on my schedule, so I'll be in, in the crowd's – cheering like a fan, like a real fan. But uh, hey, for the Super Series, 
for the Super Series Easy, man. Good luck to you guys, and thanks for coming on the podcast. Hey, no worries. Thanks for having me. All right. Uh, let's get into defensive linemen. First up, Alexi Olavuo, defensive lineman, Stockholm Mean Machine. That boy from Finland. Yeah, buddy. Finally, somebody I know, somebody I can talk about. You know, he you always for, know how to uh, say the Finnish names. Well, yeah, <laughs> I, Swedish names. I can say I can say Finnish names. I can't say Swedish. I have no practice with Swedish, and I don't know if I ever will practice with Swedish. But Finnish, I've. I mean, I've been practicing for a while here. But um, Alexei is a very unique defensive lineman. He's he's a bigger guy. He can play interior or outside defensive lineman. Um, when he played here in Helsinki, I want to say, was it last season? I get my season confused. But last time I saw him, he was, he was one of those guys that he wasn't a big name, but he was super important to what they did defensively. And that's what I think he's going to be able to do in Stockholm this year is that you might not know who he is because they don't put last names on the jerseys, craziness, but whatever number he's wearing, probably in the 90s or something, I think he's usually number like 90 or 91, you're going to notice that there's this big guy probably playing more like a three technique than anything, and he's doing things that you expect from a defensive end because he has that type of versatility, but he's strong enough to help with the run game. So it's a very versatile defense alignment that we're going to see a lot of, um, not, not – much when it comes to like pass rushing, like that's not really like his skill set. Skill set, but if you don't block him, obviously he's going to get to the quarterback. But he's definitely good at creating pressure and stopping the run. And if you get him on the outside, sometimes he will become a you know an edge rusher and bring pressure for those guys. A hey, question, Purvis. Do you know? I know he played in America, uh, high school because I know he went to like some preppy school. But did he play he also, to high school? Did he also play overseas in Europe somewhere? For a little bit, I think that he did. He, had, I know he played one year somewhere. I, d- I don't know specifically where, but I know he did spend a, a year as either import or he played somewhere else. Yeah, well, of course, I know who Alexi is. I mean, I played against him while <laughs> I was in Finland, and I know him. I know his family. I know his mom. I know his sister. Uh, good family, and I think this is a good addition to Stockholm Me Machine. So he's an import. So make sure. You guys look out for him. Uh, as he said, he's going to be probably number something in the 90s if he wants to be that uh, prima donna type guy, which I know he's not. <laughs> not he's not going to wear like you no know, single digit number, but definitely look out for him. He's going to make an impact over in Sweden playing in the uh, Super Series. I almost said Scandinavian League. Mm. Uh, mm. You got an Oslo in there, but make sure you guys look out for him. Yeah, I don't know a lot, uh, but I, I'm just excited to watch him play. Uh, I know it's a big addition uh, for Stockholm. Um, so, yeah, I'm just excited to watch him play. All right, next guy we got is Malcolm Ingstrom, defensive lineman, tier so, representing the 135. I'm just going to say this, and I'm not going to say a lot, because I could actually say a lot about this guy. I've, I've actually watched him since 2018. I've been watching him every year. But I'm just going to say this. Best defensive lineman in Sweden. He's super, super explosive off the ball. I mean, oh, my goodness. I, I remember our year in 2019, and even when I played against him as a competitor, he's in the backfield. M- Malcolm is in the backfield every play, and he's an offensive lineman nightmare. So I, I don't – I won't get mad at you saying that he's the best – um D lineman uh, in the Super Series or in Europe or anything like that. Well, let's just keep it here, Super Series. Uh, he's a dog, and he's going to be someone who is going to get to your quarterback, and he's a guy who you don't want touching your quarterback. Uh, but he's a nice guy, though, so he ain't going to do no trash talking to your quarterback after the play unless he starts that. But unless that person starts instigating him, but uh, yeah, he's definitely a guy. Like it's a no brainer. Everyone knows this. It would be. Um, a mistake on us if he was not on this list. Yeah, reigning he's the reigning defensive lineman of the year for the Super Series. Uh, I played I played quarterback for maybe a couple of snaps in a Tito game, and I, I had one pass play, and before the ball touched my hands, he was in the backfield, and I pressure immediately. And I was like, 
bam. So he's definitely explosive. He definitely can get to the backfield and he definitely is going to put pressure on your quarterback. So he's a reigning defensive lineman of the year for a reason. So I'm looking forward to watching him play again this year and uh, seeing how he's improved and yeah, watching him, watching him play. All right, Alpha, you can say the next guy name because I can't pronounce that. It's ridiculous. Yatta. That is that any bruise in that. He is a dog, you know. Uh, t- t- you didn't so pronounce has- his last name though. You got to pronounce I'll- last name. Okay, Yata Nijel. I, w- I would just say I'm a- I'm probably saying that wrong, so that's why I just skipped over that. <laughs> I'm gonna be honest. Last names are very important, but everyone know who Yata is. You only gotta say Yata. Um, oh, he- he's one of many brothers, you know. But getting back to Yata on the field. Y- Yata is very explosive off the ball. And, you know, Tirso has an, uh, a good defensive uh, line coach. You know, they have no guard. He's probably one of the best athletes on the defensive line position. Him and, um, oh, my goodness, I just forgot his name for a second, uh, Malcolm. Him and Malcolm yeah. are one of the fastest guys off the ball. Um, Yata played with me last year in um, Vasa Royals as a – important we was kind of worried about it having some knee problems but when he came over there he didn't miss a beat he he helped us out um extremely and we wanted to bring him back you know but he, he's back with Tiraso where he belongs um so yeah he's a young guy too so make sure you guys look out for Gata and the, the just the whole defensive line to be honest for uh, Tiraso we can't list everyone but Look out for him. Yeah, yeah I, I just got a quick snippet. He's he's the reigning uh, sack leader in the Super Series. So, obviously, he has no issues uh, getting to the quarterback, getting that pressure on the quarterback, and, and hitting the quarterback. And he does it very well. Um, so, yeah, just excited to watch him play. Um, a lot of teams have a lot to to plan for when they're planning to play these games against uh, Tito So and their defensive line. So, um, yeah, just excited to watch him play this year. I got nothing for him just because I've only seen him play a little bit. But, I mean, if he's playing next to Malcolm on the same D-line, like you said, that's going to be trouble for everybody. It's, interestingly enough, on offense, we probably didn't name any offensive linemen, but they're going to have their – like a lot of these teams, their offensive linemen are going to have their work cut out for them. So it's going to be interesting to see which teams are able to actually block offensively against so many good defensive players on most of these teams in the Super Series. Last guy we're going to talk about, defensive line, number nine from OBK, Sebastian Nielsen. Now, I know almost nothing about, like, him personally. Only what I've watched, and I've watched enough film on him that he's one of the one of my favorite defensive linemen. I wouldn't say – I'm not going to say that he's better or worse than anyone else personally but as a defensive lineman when i'm watching him i enjoy how he progresses how he gets to the ball how he makes plays he's a he's a hustle guy um he tracks down running backs and receivers from the back side see to make a lot of plays where someone that big shouldn't still be you know running but he is running and that puts the fear of god in anyone who's on the other side of the ball because you can't really rest or think that, oh, I'm in the second level. I don't have to worry about the first level because he will catch you. And what I really like about him is that that hustle attitude that he has. I've seen him make a lot of plays where I didn't think he was going to be in the play. And just that that type of player resonates with me because that's what I want to see on the football field. And I'm excited about seeing number nine, Sebastian Nielsen, for OBK this year. Swap. We were swapping coaches in the middle of the season and kind of some up and downs there that didn't make it easier for us. And there's no secret we're in a kind of a generational shift. We've got a lot of young players coming up and mm-hmm. every year that that's passing, they're getting more mature, more used to the speed and the like tempo of senior football. So I think we're just going to improve every year and uh, be a force to be reckoned with. Okay. Now, going going into this season, you know, every game, uh, people say this over and over. I hate this whole phrase of, uh, what is it, go 1-0 and o or win one game at a time because that's what everybody talks about. So, I want to go a step further, and I want you to tell me what are a couple of things that you guys will have to do 
consistently, you know, in each game to make sure you win that week? You know, what is something that, you know, every week this has got to be a goal because we know if we do this, we can win. What is a couple of those things you guys have kind of leaned towards in the offseason getting ready for this year? Or one of the key factors for big success in previous years uh, was that we had a real powerhouse of an offense. And we haven't really had these uh, this the last couple of years. Our defense has been pretty solid, but we've been kind of lacking on on offense. So I think just being able to like control the game from an offensive standpoint, I think it's going to be important mm-hmm. for us because we still have a lot of our key deficit players still coming in, and I think we're going to be solid on defense, no question about it. So I've, I'm really looking forward to seeing what our head coach, Christian Forsman, is, is going to do with our office this year. Okay, that's awesome. Um, I want to get more into the actual roster because, you know, things have changed a little bit. You said you, had, you guys have a lot of young players. Who are some of the guys that – you think are going to, you know, heavily contribute to your team's success this year that maybe the the normal fan doesn't know? You know, throw out some new names so I can start looking for guys. Obviously, we have uh, the linebacker, uh, Alex Gooding. He was Mm -hmm. the third leading tackler last year, hell of a player. Um, And I think it's about time that he gets recognized. We have some youngins coming up on offense, too. Uh, One that comes to mind is uh, Anton. Ulison, uh, real good physique, uh, still young, still has lots to learn, but he he for sure is someone to look out for. All right, there was a couple names. That's all we needed. A couple guys to keep our eyes on from the uh, Crusaders coming up. Last question, now I'm going to let you get out of here, Matthias. This season, it's different, you know, super soon. Eight teams this year. A wow. lot of yeah. You know, yeah, a lot of changes from you personally. What is something that you're really excited about seeing in this Super Series season? Like, what is something that you think is going to stand out and make it one of the best that we've seen in recent years? Well, obviously, you you said it. We're eight teams now uh, after being only four for uh, some years now. So I think everyone is just feeling like this energy from just this change, these new teams coming up. And I feel like they're – like ready to fight for it. and yeah, everyone's just feeling energized and it's going to be a real fun, fun year, I believe. All right. Well, that's all I had for you. Matthias, I wish you and the Carl Stack Crusaders nothing but luck this season. It'll be exciting to see you guys, uh, how you rebound this season. Um, I remember last year there was a lot of just, in my opinion, a lot of randomness, but, you know, that's how it goes sometimes. We have one game and then three weeks off and then another game. But, you know, mm-hmm. yeah. I won't talk too much about the schedule. But um, good luck to you guys this season. And can't wait to see you out there. And we'll be following you on the PFS pod. Yeah, thank you. Appreciate it. All right, let's get into the linebacking group, and we'll start off with the guy I just interviewed, Matthias Erickson, linebacker from Carlstad Crusaders. Okay, I know I've been making a lot of, like, outlandish remarks about who's the best and who's not the best and stuff, but I'm going to forget it. I'm going to go with it. Best linebacker in Sweden. Yeah, I said it, and I meant it. (laughs) This dude, when, when he tackled people, I can feel it. Like, when I'm watching, I can feel it when he hits people. And I don't feel any remorse for the other person. I feel like, why why, why you hit me? Like, I don't understand. Because that's the type of guy that he is. And um, long-time Crusaders, he's a, a leader on that on that defensive unit. But he always brings it. And that's what I, I like about Matthias Erickson. And you guys are going to see it this year. Crap, I can't remember what number he is. He's 40-something? 42. Yeah, 42. 42 sounds like. Yeah, 42. Yeah. yeah. Eric, I mean, that's he's, what I know, he probably got hit. <laughs> still got a mark. <laughs> that's the type of player he is, you know. Um, he also spent, he spent a summer out here in Sinayoki, um, in Finland before, out there near where um, Jalo would be playing. So I got to see him up close in person, but I've also seen him up close in Karlstad when they played some games too. But he's – Easily one of my favorites to watch. And, again, I said best one in Sweden. I'm not really sidestepping that. He he probably is the best linebacker. Complete linebacker. Not an outside linebacker, a real linebacker. That's what I like about him. 
You guys yeah. know anything about Matthias? We all know about Matthias. I played against, I played with him, and I played against him. And I see what he can do on the football field. And he also, you know, just speaking a little bit of historicalness on – that's not even a word. But give him some history on it, Matthias. I played with him at Karlstad in 2017 for the first year I came to Europe. He was already a good football player. And I seen him leave to go – I believe he plays to some football – a program in Canada, and when he came back, he was night and day. His football game elevated. I remember when I played with a guy named Gerard Johnson, Gerard Johnson, and yet the body, mm-hmm. and he was like, "Yeah, number forty-two, bro." I, <laughs> he was pointing his head. Was like, "Yeah, bro, I don't know what's going on right now." Like he's dinging people. Everything you said about him, Purvis, is factual. You, you're looking at it from a spectator perspective. We feeling these hits, Antoine. Yeah. <laughs> you knew the number. I said the wrong number. Antoine yeah. knew the correct number of him, and yeah. I know you got some memories against this guy. He he's that type of player on the field that's gonna make you, hey, bro, yeah, block him, hey. You talk to your old like, hey, just make sure you block him. I don't I don't care about this guy. Make sure you block him. You know, that's that's uh, Matias for you. Yeah, just, just real quick, like he, he's a dog. You like he's if you want somebody who who can. Lead a defense. He's a defensive leader. Uh, he's the reigning league MVP for the Super Series. He's the reigning linebacker of the year. He's the reigning leader in tackles. He, he does everything, and he hits like he hits hard. He hits hard, even in practice, uh, going across the middle, catching a plant or something. He makes you. He doesn't hit you in practice, but just just the approach that he's about to hit you, like oh, like I'm glad I'm on your team and I'm not going against you because if I have to catch this in the game coming across the middle, oh my god, yeah. So the receivers. Doing slant stuff, keep your head on the swivel. Watch out for him across the middle. Running backs, watch out for him. He's he's just he's just that dude. He's a beast. He's a dog. That's it. All right, next guy we have uh, finally someone who's playing in the Super Series, but not for one of the teams in Sweden. Uh, Will Sal, linebacker, well, defensive lineman turned linebacker this season, from what we've been told, uh, from the Oslo Vikings. If I was to just say it. Actually, you know what, Alpha, you go first. When you when you see Will, you, all you have to do is just be a spectator at a football game and just look at the field and say, "Okay, I'm watching him." His body, <laughs> you know. If I lift up my shirt right now, you're like, "Oh wow, this guy's fit." You look at this guy, and he probably has 20, 25 pounds on me, and he's just a freak on the football field. He's a very he's got that Aaron Donald body. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> you know, he looks like Aaron Donald. Like he can be soft as Jane, but you're still gonna watch him on the football field, you know. Uh, so just, just his physique already gives you a reason why he's a player to watch. But on the football field, he's very fast. He's very explosive. He is an Eric Donald type player on the football field, but he also can play multiple positions. He can play linebacker, he can play D line, and we even seen him running the ball on offense. And I actually, if I if I could be wrong, but I remember when we was doing some scouting. I think he returned the kick, you know, as well. So he's a guy to watch. I don't have anything to add. I'm just excited <laughs> to watch him play. I, I don't know him personally. I, I don't. But, uh, I'm excited to watch him play. You're all right. Okay. <laughs> I just put the camera on Antoine. He's like, hold on, what now? Um, <laughs> Will is, is – I mean, I literally would say everything that Jalo already said about him, so I won't just reiterate that. But one thing I, I do want to say about Will is – his athleticism will be on display. He's the he's the type of guy um, to speak more on what what Alpha said about watching them play when when they played against the Mean Machines. I want to say last season or a year before, I can't remember. They they almost beat him, and it was in a game where he literally he started at line at defensive end. They moved him to defensive tackle a few times. At one point, he was playing middle linebacker. And then he was playing outside linebacker, and then. They put him on offense to run the ball, and then in that same game, he ended up returning a kick. Now, that's a lot to do in one game, and him being, being able to do that is what made the team competitive in that game. Like He was the difference of why they actually had a chance to win that game. You take him away from all those positions, like he was doing better than their starting running back. Like they put him in, and he made a, a difference right away because that's the type of player he is. And having him play linebacker for them this year is going to be crazy because playing defensive end, that is this normal position, it 
you can kind of plan against that. But when you put him at linebacker, you can't plan, you can't take him away from the play. He can always be in the play. And if if Will Sal, number one, is always on the play, the offenses are in trouble. They're in trouble because he can go side to side. He can run with anybody. I don't know what his size is. He's got to be what, like 6'2, 240? Maybe 235. So like I don't know. I mean, he's yeah, big. He, he's fit. He's he's big, but he's not fat. So it's like, I don't know yeah. how to guess his weight because, you know, muscle weighs more sometimes, but he's not super tall, but he's he's a good height. He, he might even be shorter than 6'2, but he look. If I had to just say off the looks, he looks, <laughs> and if you're on the field next to him, he looks like he's 6'4, 265, coming at you, running a 4'3. <laughs> That's what that's what he look and feel like. So I don't know what his actual measurements are, but he plays like he's 6'4, 6'5, 250. Okay, so that's what we got for Will Sauer. Yeah, he's he's the definition of I pass the look test. Definition. Mm -hmm. Okay, so last guy we have um uh, linebacker Josh Akina from AIK. And before anybody's like, oh, what, what, where y'all come out of that from? Come on, guys. Let's be honest. Let's not act like Josh Akita ain't one of the best to come out of Sweden in the last 10, 15 years. I would put him on the same level of, as Matthias Erickson if he didn't do that whole hiatus of playing running back for like four years. I don't know what that was about. That was crazy. He went to what he, he went to Stockholm, I think it was the first time, and they put him at running back. And then next thing you know, I think he even played running back on the national team. I'm like, what, what is this guy doing? He's a linebacker. Last year, he finally went back to Munich Ravens playing linebacker, and he mm -hmm. was getting active. And now he's come back to AIK, and we have the interview coming up here in a couple um, seconds, actually. He said he's back to prove who he is, and that's a linebacker. He's a hitter. So that's what we're going to be looking for. Now, if he comes out here and looks like old man River, we're still going to watch because that's going to be funny too. But either way, he's either going to you know prove that he still got it or we're going to have a lot of fun at the expense of Josh Aquino. No roses needed. We just got to make sure this his celebrity status off the field don't come onto his play, you know. I think he's going to be having roses at the game, being a little bit romantic. So that's why he's my play to watch. <laughs> no, I'm kidding. Uh, I know Josh for several years, so uh, I know what he brings to the football field. Um, he's strong, he's fast, uh, and I love the way he played in the ELF last year. Um, got himself a pick so he can catch the ball. You know, he if he does get his hands on the ball, he's gonna get some juice with it. And, and you mentioned well, he got like, soft hands. Like, yeah, Girl, girls don't like rough hands. He got soft hands. <laughs> you sure they don't like? You sure they don't like rough hands? They don't like nah. rough hands, man. You, nah, I, I think I got a blend. I think I got a blend. You got soft hands too. Uh, thank you. It's not really about the hand hand. It's the fingertips actually. Like that's the part that's not rough. That's oh oh oh, rough. oh oh yeah 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 yeah. Yeah. No wonder. I, might I, don't know, I, don't know, I don't know who you're touching with your palm. Like, I don't know who you're rubbing with your palm, but it's the fingertips. That's what that's what you catch a football with also. You don't catch it with your hand, hand. You catch it with the fingers. Soft All right, coach. I just grabbed the ball. Anyways, Josh, he's a player to watch on the football field because of numerous, numerous reasons. He's a great athlete. And he can run sideline to sideline, and he's going to hit you as well. Yeah, I don't, I don't have much to add. Like I, I played against him last year in the Super Series. Obviously, when he played for uh, Tudor, so he played linebacker and, and running back. And I watched him play when he went over uh, to the ELF. Listen, he, he, he can, he can play the position very well. Uh, he's smart. Uh, he can hit. Obviously, uh, he got a pick in the ELF, so he can catch, and then he can run. So, all the things you look for in a good linebacker, he has it. So, yeah, I'm just excited to watch him play. And he's uh and he's playing for AIK this year, so I think uh, having him join AIK, uh, I think it helps them on a defensive end of the ball. And that's defensive players, guys. Okay, we're here with Josh Aquina from AIK, and how do you say it correctly, uh, Alpha? How do y'all pronounce it? Oh, you cool. Yeah, what he said. Uh, Josh, welcome to the podcast. Yeah. Thank you, fellas. Thank you. 
Miss you, bro. So, <laughs> yeah, I miss you too, so man. Hey, get... it's, it's good to see y'all. I like what you guys have got going on over here. So, definitely keep that up. I miss playing with you on the football you know... field. We got to make that happen again. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you want me to you want me to make some calls? I'll make some calls. I think I need to make a call for you. Look, before we even right. get into the, the interview, I gotta tell the story of the first time I ever saw Josh Aquino because this needs to be circulated around the world, and this is the perfect opportunity. So I'm in Finland. It's gotta be what? It's gotta be 2016. Yeah, it's gotta be 2016. 16, yeah. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. I'm in Finland. And this is my first summer watching football in Finland. And I go to the games, you know, watching the Wassa Royals. I don't know who, who Vasa is. I don't know who anybody on the team is. I just know, you know, I know there's imports out there and stuff. And I see a linebacker out there, you know, wreaking havoc. And the linebacker who's out there wreaking havoc, apparently he's an import. And everybody's like, oh, yeah, he's da 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 I'm like, yeah, but what about the other guy out there? Like, the dude next to him is just as good. But – no one's talking about him. I don't even know who that is. Like no one's told me who that guy's name is. I think it was number five or something. I can't remember what number, what number you were wearing. But I go do a little research and they're like, oh yeah, the other guy, that's just a Swedish guy. I'm like, what you mean just a Swedish guy? I'm like, you sure that's not like a <laughs> half American, half something? They're like, no, nah, no, nah, he's just a Swedish guy. I'm like, what you mean, no, nah, no, nah, are you not watching the same game I'm watching? And I remember just thinking back, like, Dude, Swedish guy, Sweden got some. Ballers. Like, that was my first impression of, like, Josh Aquino. First, I thought you were an American on the field just by your play. And then secondly, yep. I immediately you, – you immediately gave uh, Sweden recognition in my, my book that Sweden knows how to make football players. I was like, if he's from Sweden, that's where I need to go watch football because they got ballers out there. I mean, it, 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 it might have a little bit to do with your skin color. But that's that's neither here nor there. It's a little bit major, major. <laughs> I, 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 I want to say it has to do with my balling. So <laughs> it was pretty. It was pretty uh, prejudiced of me to assume that you were import because of your skin color. But it was really based on the play. I was like, they got two like import linebackers. That's crazy. Because I was like, why would you do that? But then I was like, well, I understand because their defense was really good. I don't even remember who the other guy was. Was it uh, CY? Was it CY? Was it CY. CY. Chris yeah, Young. CY. The GOAT. Chris Young. Yeah, yeah. The GOAT GOAT. Yeah. He is the I GOAT. Later in the se- to, to humble you a little bit, later in the season, I saw that he was you know a little bit better than you. But, you know. Yeah. But, <laughs> no, he was crazy. That first he game was crazy. I saw, <clears throat> yeah, I think I saw you play in Helsinki. I think in that game specifically, I was just – I was really impressed on, on how good you were. Because I could usually like kind of point out who was local and who wasn't, and you were just better than everybody except for him, obviously. But it's like you know, it's okay if you're not better than Tom Brady. You know, you still be exactly. better than you know other people. So that that's the story. I wasted like four minutes on that. That's ridiculous because we normally don't spend this much time on interviews. But let's get into it, Josh Aquina. I appreciate it. I'm not gonna lie. I appreciate it. <laughs> I, just, I had to put it out and put it on record. I like to get that stuff on record. I have, mm-hmm. I have a similar story about, about Alpha, but we'll do his at another date and time. Actually, I'm like, we already, <laughs> might have already done his. I've, I've had him on a couple different shows. But let's jump into this interview, because this is supposed to be on the PFS podcast, not just whatever Purvis wants to talk about. First thing I really want to ask you specifically is, why AIK? Because, I mean, let's just, let's be honest. You you played on almost every team in Sweden. If I had to pick a villain, <laughs> it would be Thanos. Because he picks <laughs> like, he's got to collect all the rings, you know? Uh, or all the all the stones. So that's what I'm doing right now. AIK is the, is the next stone. And in all seriousness, um, basically, geographically, it makes more sense. But also, I did want to be a part of something from the beginning. Because AIK don't have the rich history of having like a super serious team. And I've been sick and tired of having four teams in the Super Series uh, for the longest. And it's like, at one point, I stopped even looking at, like, Phil. Because it didn't make sense for me to watch Phil because it's the same people we keep playing. It's only three teams to play against. But this time, I figured, okay, well, AIK would be a different challenge for me. And it would also be fun to just help 
pass along knowledge and being like the underdog. So those three reasons, basically. Four if you count the Thanos part. Some changes and you know, some some players, and we don't know necessarily who's gonna be the imports so you're gonna bring imports lace. What are your thoughts on the season? It's gonna be interesting for sure. Um, I know the AIK wanted to get a foot in just to basically I mean division one wasn't gonna be a thing for them this year, uh, because they felt like they were better than that, and I can agree that we do have some promising young players. And I really think that with like the right leadership and guidance, we can compete. I'm not going to sit here and say that we're going to probably win the whole thing because I don't know. But we're just going to take it game by game and hopefully be like a little uh, dark horse in the league. That's my hopes, at least. So I have high hopes and I believe in these young guys. Sorry to cut you off. We were talking about this last week. We kind of see you guys yeah. as a bottom team. Let's keep it real. However, yeah, I saw that, and and I was like, out for the disrespect. I know. What do you, I know. What do you mean out here? I know a, a lot of teams. Oh, he purpose put us. He purpose put us at what seven? You got some explaining to do. Hey, I'll put it out here. To me, AIK is just three letters. That's that's what you represent. Three letters. Oh well, prove me wrong. That's fine. Well, exactly. The thing, the thing is, we understand that. I core is new to the league, and we also understand that I core believes that they should have been in Super Series outright for some years ago, based off their talent. You know, yeah. However, to us, they haven't proven that, so we just had to keep it at this position. However, we also that's fair. That, that's however, we the last however I'm gonna say is that <laughs> you guys gotta just beat the 16. Do you think that's realistic to beat the two teams from the South that just moved up? When you guys have not proven to beat those teams in outright, I definitely think it's possible. I wouldn't say that it's not possible, and I wouldn't even All just right, aim okay. to beat those two teams. I, I, I was, I'll keep it simple like this: Are you guys making playoffs? You want playoff <laughs> predictions before the before the first game is even played, Alpha? <laughs> I, I, yeah. I want. I want to bring that. He's here for all that. Trash. He's putting like, all the pressure. I'm. I'm out here trying to be like you know, keeping the chip on the shoulder and stuff. Uh, I would say uh, my goal this year is to make the playoffs. Is that good enough for you? <laughs> right. I'm gonna come back. With we want to stay time. relevant. <laughs> it's okay. Yeah, yeah. we'll we'll talk week week four. We'll talk. What I wanted to ask you. Josh is a little bit more about the squad that you guys have this year. Like I said, to me, there's just three letters, AIK. Um, I forgot to mention on the last episode, not meant to as well. Dope jerseys, though. Love mm. the unis. Shout out mm, to yeah. Rare Athletics. You dig? Mm. I've always liked AIKs since they, you know, switched over to the, you know, the gang gang. But outside of the the uniforms, that's that's all I know about AIK. And like you said, they don't have a rich history like some of these teams. You can just say Carlstad Crusaders and people in Europe might know who they're talking about. You know, you say Stockholm Meaders, yeah. people know. Even Oslo Vikings, people know. Or Brew, some people might know. They did have a run for a while where they were up there. But, you know, everyone else, no one knows who the Predators are, who AIK is, Limham Griffins, and I'm still confused by the whole Griffins thing and Momo they got going on. But back to AIK. Yeah, who yeah. are some of the players? Who are some of the players that are going to be, you know, showing up this year on the Super Series stage? Throw out some names. Let us learn the, the squad a little bit. Who are some of the guys that are going to be, you know, showing up, showing out for you guys? I mean, there's definitely some names that are known, like to the national team and stuff, uh, but that doesn't necessarily say much to like an international audience. Um, but there's, if you want some names, um, when I'm watching the game, see, we have. What names will I yeah. see? Like, I'll see their numbers, but what, what are their names? Because it's usually hard to know if you don't know the names are. You give us two on offense and two on defense. Two on offense, two on six. defense. Give me six on the O-line. Six names on the O-line? You know I don't know <laughs> O-lineman's names. Come on, man. <laughs> Isaac Beekman, um, he's, uh, he's usually like a very sure deep threat receiver. Very shifty, um, good at using like his body and positions himself to catching the ball uh, as best he can. And then uh, at Gunslinger right now, we have a, a name you probably know, maybe know, 
Victor Ekberg. Ekberg. Used to play for all the Jets. Yeah. And played a little bit for Uppsala. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, exactly. They also call him Thick Vic. So I, I don't know if. <laughs> oh, okay. Well, that lets me. Yeah. I, I, okay. Now I know exactly who you're talking about. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Did he used to play on the U19 team? No. He played in the national a team. While yeah. Back. Yeah, yeah. A while back. A while back. He, okay. When you, say, when you say Thick Vic, I know. Yeah. I have a very. See? That's what I'm saying. Photo of yeah. who I'm talking about. Woo. Okay. That's that's okay. how we're gonna refer to Victor for the rest of the season on the podcast. Thick, thick. Hey, you might as well. You might as well. And then um, let's see. On defense, we got my man Elliot. I forgot his last name now, just because I'm on the spot. Uh, Kro Kro Krogis, something like that. He plays a uh, he plays DB slash like lime outside linebacker. Uh, force to be reckoned with. He's a young kid. A lot of explosiveness. He he's a baller for sure. And then uh who else am I gonna give away right now? And I can't mention myself, right? Not really. Nobody cares about you. You're, you're nobody cares anymore. about me anymore, man. I'm a relic out here. You, you got the um <laughs> we know you I know, it. right? I already made it. I mean, don't who you guys else? have two young it, it was two young players that I've met when I was at um Mo's house, Coach Mo's house. There was two young players. Mm -hmm. I think they was trying to get to America. I know one of them could be a DB. I don't remember the names. But there was another one that I think also played off as might be a tight end. Tall, the receiver? Yeah. yeah. Tall, blonde kid? Yes. Uh, I don't know yeah, if he's yeah. going to play this year, though. That's the only issue. Um, so I thought before, but, uh, you mean Gustav, right? I, I think that could be his name. I forget his name. Yeah. Gustav Ross. We'll, hopefully, we'll see him this season, but I'm not sure. Yeah, if that gives if this guy's playing on the team. I think he can keep you guys really competitive for sure. Um, yeah, but those are the names we got for you, just on the spot like this. Okay, just a few names. Okay, Alpha, you got anything else? For just a few names out here. I just want to know who's going to be strapping down. But you already mentioned the guy who's going to be locking down at the DB position. Um, yes, sir. I hope that you guys be successful and be competitive because I'm excited to see you guys. I do love the jerseys, as Purvis mentioned as well. You know, shout out to Ray for that. And also, Tirso jerseys look really good. With the competition starting to rise up in the Super Series right now, Stockholm is in the yeah. Stockholm area, of course. Tirso is in the southern part of Stockholm, uh, southeast. And our I core is, you know, a little bit more north. Do you think it's challenging to get yes, sir. some of the best players right now? To get the players right now? No, no, to get like some of the top players in Stockholm because there's a lot of talent. And, and let's be real, we think that most of the talent is with Tirso as Swedish players in the Stockholm area and some of them going to yeah. Stockholm. Uh, but we don't know much about Ari Core. So I'm trying to get your mind to explain like the competition of trying to grab some of the players, some teams maybe throwing money at them. Can you speak a little bit towards that? I mean, I would say definitely is a, it's a challenge. Um... Because, I mean, you, we all know Stockholm got big sponsors. It's easy to get players over there because they have the whole organization set up pretty nicely. I mean, Purvis, you know. Uh, I mean, Alpha, you too. You play there. Yeah. Um, and then, as you guys said, Tirso has the talent where they have a pretty close-knit group that was broken away, breaking away from Stockholm. So they do have that. While AIK have been in Division One and basically going up and down talent-wise. And some people venture out and want to go like play ball in Europe. Some people want to play in college. So, I mean, that would be the biggest challenge right now, but I would say like in a few years, definitely be a team to like account for, but we're just setting the, setting the cement right now. We're setting, laying the foundation. Last one. Then I'm going to let you get out of here, Josh. Uh, All right. So we know that, you know, everybody's excited. There's eight teams in the super series and yeah, yeah, yeah. That's real cool. Yep. But from your your personal experience going into this season, what is something about this season and what, what's possible for you and your team that really excites you about this season in the Super Series? Like, what are you excited about? What gets you out of bed in the morning? For me personally or the team? For you personally. We'll worry about the team later. For me personally, I'm all about just – because honestly, I've played offense for a couple of years now, and people seem to have forgotten that I actually play linebacker. 
So mm -hmm. I have a personal vendetta against everybody. So I'm oh. just going to go out and just deliver. Yeah, I love when you played in the so ELF that's, for Munich. I that did play ELF cool. just, just last year. So with the Munich yeah. Ravens. Yeah, you look so good. yeah, but people still people. Thanks, man. I appreciate it. Who are these people? people still don't know. Haters, man. People? I don't know. It's the hey, youngins. I'm talking the young generation. Yeah. They don't know. They they doing the oh. same thing to me. Jalo, Jesus, they are, aren't they? Yeah. Jews. You know, I heard Jesse that too. They, I heard. Internet. I heard you lost your juice and stuff. I don't know, man. Uh, wow. They they out here tripping, you know. Hey, I I want to be included, guys. At least y'all are good enough that they can say you lost something. People always ask me, did you even play football? <laughs> uh, I don't know. Maybe I did. Maybe I didn't. Maybe maybe what well, I thought bad, I did was just not even football. It was so long ago. I mean, we, we know like, you existed. They're like, like, yeah, you play flag, you right? Play. You play flag. <laughs> yeah, that's me. I'm the flag player. You know, I'm out there. <laughs> Which division did you play? Oh. <laughs> yeah. You know, third division flag team in Finland. You know, we was out here. <laughs> Exactly. People were surprised when I, when I played flag football by by how well I move. For an old man, they always put that on there too. For an old guy, you're pretty spry, pretty spry. At least you two guys are still active young guys. <laughs> if you if you ain't six feet under, you're young. How about that? That's true. Man, That's true. I've been saving this question for the end. So you become a celebrity off the field. How has this TV personality helped you out? In the market, <laughs> in the market, and <laughs> off the field. I mean, you're a celebrity on the field at the same time now. How how does that feel? It is different, but uh, I believe that we'll we'll use this um, this rise to fame in AIK's favor and try to bring as many people out to the games. See, I know this. No, I'll, so I'll, I'll hand out roses. How about that? Yeah, so so many ladies <laughs> gonna want to be at the game to see. Oh, Josh and Dina. <laughs> man, I've been seeing them on YouTube with the IE court. Like, YouTube is out there. It's like, man, Josh, you're making an impact with this celebrity status. I, I, sh I should use it more. I really don't use it at all, actually. Yeah, that's, but I definitely should man, use it more. Now you're just giving people an excuse to be like, oh, yeah, yeah, he don't care about football. He cares about being on TV, giving roses to ladies and things like that. <laughs> Yo. <laughs> see, I, I see. Well, it makes sense now to why they're saying these things about you. Yeah, man, it's a right. retirement plan. I think we need to go ahead and nickname him LL Cool J. Ladies love. Damn. Job. LL Cool J. Hey, I like that. I like that. Ladies love. Cool I can fly J. with that. I like. So we got exactly. we got Vic. We got Vic at Dick Vic. Dick Vic. Mister Akina at LL Cool J. Yeah, and That's I mean, fair. I guess That's what fair. we're gonna do with with AIK. The best way we can actually learn to remember who's on the team is to start giving you guys nicknames. There you go. Nickname <laughs> squad. Well, Josh, again, we appreciate you coming on uh, this interview. It's it much longer than we, we should have done. But as always, it was a great time. Good luck to you and AIK this season. Uh, Thank you. We'll see you around. Jalo, Absolutely. you want to say to him? Good luck on this season. Good luck to IACOR. I hope you guys make it to the playoffs. Thanks, man. Appreciate it. All right, guys. All right. Hey, Dor. All right. That's it for this episode of Pro Football Sweden. Any last words before we get out of here? Jalo Juice. If you guys think that there's some players that we missed on this list, comment down below. And be sure to keep following us as we bring you guys content every week about American football in Sweden. Pro football and Sweden. Anything? Yeah, like, share, subscribe, do all those things. Uh, follow us, help us grow this platform, and uh, hopefully we can continue to bring you guys great, great content and talking about the game of American football in Sweden. Good luck to all the players that we named on this show, as well as the previous one. Actually, everybody in the Super Saiyan. Hope everyone's able to make it through a safe season and play competitive. And again, we're here for you. So follow, like, subscribe, all that good stuff, all social channels at Pro Football Sweden. And we'll see you next time. Hey, Dor.